Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Fireball Podcast with Ashley Mayfield. If you appreciate videos just like this one, make sure you hit subscribe and share it with a friend. Now buckle up and brace for impact. Today, we're going to talk about stirring up your dream. Are you positioning yourself in a way where you're stirring up your dream or are you just like focused on yesterday's nonsense? Look, I get it has been a long 12 months. It's been an exhausting year. Some of us are physically fatigued, mentally fatigued, emotionally drained. We're combating burnout, all of these things, but it is time that you stir up your dream. You cannot continue to focus on the past, focus on your mistakes, focus on what you did wrong. We have to continue moving forward. So what are some tactical things that we can do moving forward? Maybe we don't feel like it. Maybe we can't see the vision, okay? I know for me, uh, it's so easy to get distracted, so easy to let life happen, so easy to make excuses. But if you want to change your life, opportunity is not going to magically fall out of the sky. You're not going to magically uh, get all sorts of kind of money and then your all your problems are just fixed. You have to work for it. You get to create opportunity. You get to create everything that it takes in order for you to achieve your dream. So how do we do it when we're feeling defeated, when we are not seeing the finish line, when the fog is so thick, our, our car headlights cannot see through to the beautiful scenery? How do you keep growing? How do you not stay defeated? How do you uh, let the weak say I am strong? Let's talk, take it to the Bible here, okay? So I just want to share with you guys just a couple things that you can write down, that you can stick in your back pocket, that if you're tired, if you're exhausted, you must keep going. You have to keep going. You've got to stir up that dream again. But it's so hard sometimes when our thoughts or our emotions are overwhelming us. And it doesn't matter who you are. We all face this. We all combat this, right? Where it's just like, I don't feel like doing it or I'm tired. I'm exhausted. And how do I keep that spark alive? And if your spark is super alive and your vision is super fresh, I promise you, you can still implement these things to be able to prevent, uh, you know, deterring yourself or losing focus. And what I love about your dream is at any moment you can ignite it. It does not take uh, a fresh month, a fresh year. It literally just takes you showing up, uh, retraining your brain, programming your brain and going after everything that you have. So the first thing that I always want to tell people is don't panic in your process. Whatever your dream is, whether you're looking at this from like a spiritual aspect or a relational aspect or your family or your career or your business, no matter what it is, stop freaking out in your process. Don't panic in your process. It's so important that you know that. We have moments throughout our process where it's not just us pissing rainbows and butterflies. You're not going to have all these incredible mountaintop experiences. I felt like my thing was unrolled there. It was distracting me. Um, you know, we're not going to have all these mountaintop experiences. You're not going to always be in love with the process, but don't panic in the process. Stop panicking when it's not clear. Stop panicking when someone walks away, when someone who you thought was supporting you starts doubting you, when the dog dies and your kid gets sick and life tries to throw all these things in your way, you are going to have distractions. And if a little thing, if the tiniest thing can take you out, you are not that serious to begin with. You did not buy in to the dream enough. You can sit back and complain that no one supports you. No one wants it. It's not happening as fast as you did. But if you're so quick to give up, if your panic paralyzes you, how many more peas can I throw in here? If your panic paralyzes you and brings you to the point of quitting, of throwing in the towel in your process, you never had it in you to begin with. If the smallest thing can trip you up, if things not going the way you want or life happening or distractions coming in, Sister, if the devil cannot destroy you, he is going to distract you. He is going to bring things in your path to intentionally trip yourself up because he knows you'll take yourself out. He doesn't have to destroy you. It doesn't have to be DEFCON 5 and ultimate catastrophe that's happening around you. It could be the little things that derail you. It's the little things that distract you. And so don't panic in your process. On the way to success, it is going to be full of failures. It's going to be full of your roads going to have potholes and detours and dead ends. And this is normal. 
When did we start normalizing like acceleration and advancement and all these things? No, it's the process that teaches you the most. But you can't take yourself out when you hit the process. You can't start freaking out and panicking. You have to develop yourself in a way where your mind is stable, where your emotions are in check, where you can detach emotionally and look at your situation. Stop freaking out. Stop thinking it's the end of the world. Stop calling yourself a one hit wonder. Stop saying it's never going to happen. Stop saying, but I'm not quitting. Don't worry. No, you are quitting. If you say that, if you're acknowledging that you're not quitting, you are quitting. That's like me showing up to every disagreement me and Jason have say, (laughs) don't worry. We're not getting a divorce. It's fine. I'm still saying the word, right? So don't panic in your process. You have to be able to go through these things when When you can't see it, when it's not happening, don't panic. Keep taking a step forward. Second thing I want to encourage you is if you're wanting to stir up that dream on the inside of you, if you're really wanting to chase after whatever it is that 2021 holds for you, whatever the new year brings, and again, you can revisit this. It don't matter if it's March 17th. It don't matter if it's August 2nd. Like You can still come back to this. It doesn't take a beginning of something where you can start fresh. You can start over at any time. How are you letting your dream grow you? If you really want to stir up your dream, you want to stir up your faith, you want to annihilate, you want to dominate, you want to do all the things. How is your dream growing you? Your dream has to grow you. You see, what's funny is oftentimes we talk about the things in our life like it's our baby, right? Our our children, they're our babies, which, okay, I get that one. But like our business, for example, How many of you, guilty as charged, how many of you have ever said your business is your baby? The problem with that is when our business is our baby, we think that we're the expert already and this, we're supposed to nurture it and it's supposed to thrive all on its own. Your business is not your baby. You are the baby of your business. Your business is the expert. Your business is the adult. Your business works. It is effective, right? I'm sure unless like unless you're totally starting from scratch, there is something out there that is comparable. That, I mean, go down the cookie aisle. There's like 5,947 different kinds of cookies, okay? And so we know that cookies are effective. And so if you come, the cookie industry is the boss. You are your business's baby. You are your inspiration's baby. How is the dream growing you? Are you developing? Do you have grit? Do you have perseverance? Are you positioning yourself in a way where you're setting yourself up for success, where you can win? My friend, you are the baby. When we start calling things our babies, think about it. Have you ever done that with your kids? I do that all the time. I'm like, you're my baby. And then what happens? I become like psycho mom. I become a helicopter mom. I start creating scenarios that never existed. I start protecting them from things that they like are super ignorant of. And I like open their eyes to all this like trauma and pain and scare things. I'm like super observant whenever we're out. Like who's watching my baby? Who's touching my It's my baby. It came from me, right? That's how we get with our physical kids. So if you show up to your business, your goal, your dream, calling it your baby, you're going to get to this point where you become this egotistical control freak. And it's never going to grow because you are the lid. So is your dream growing you? Is your dream growing you? Is it allowing you to trust yourself? Is it allowing you to trust? um, You trust that you have the ability to make it happen? Are you growing? Are you developing? Are you a stronger person now than you were a month ago? Is your dream growing you? How are you going to stir up that dream if it's not growing you? Right? If you can't say, wow, I see progress. Some of us have to take a long, hard, honest look in the mirror because some of you are not being as honest with yourself as you can. Some of you are dropping the ball. You're missing the mark. You're not prioritizing your things. You are the reason your dream is not stirred up. You are not allowing that dream to grow you. Every law, everything that happens to you, everything that comes at you, Um, you're taking it as opposition. You're taking it as failure. Oh my gosh, this person walked away from me. Oh, that means I suck. That means I can't do it anymore. Opposed to looking at it saying, wow, maybe that was protection. My husband said that a couple months ago. We were talking, I don't even remember what we were talking about. We were talking about something and I was really upset that something didn't happen the way that I expected it to. And instead of him agreeing with me, he was just like, you know, maybe that was protection. Maybe that was God protecting you from something. Maybe that was God protecting us from something. And it really shifted my mind. I was like, wow, like that's such an optimistic way to look at the situation, right? That's such a way to look at it and say, God, thank you for growing me in a way where I can acknowledge 
your protection. I can acknowledge these things that you are doing in my life. You're protecting me from something that I don't even have to see. Thank you for that. See, when I say that, my dream is growing me. When I say that, I understand that life is happening for me, not to me, that I'm able to take every single thing along the path and use it for the glory of God and for my good. I can allow him to work through. I mean, I think about in the Bible and not to go like, you know, super deep with you guys, but I think about when Moses went to Pharaoh and say, let my people go, let my people go. How many times did he have to do it before God hardened Pharaoh's heart? God can use a bad situation. And then what happened? Right after Moses and the Israelites left, God softened Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh gets pissed. He takes all the best chariots and all his best men and goes after Moses. How does that even make sense? How is that letting the dream grow you? Well, it allowed Moses to reach a level of faith where they uh, encountered, they had, uh, you know, Pharaoh and uh, the people coming from this side. And then they had the Red Sea on this side and Moses was able to do a miracle. God, God did a mir- performed a miracle through Moses parting the Red Sea. They were able to leave on dry gra- ground. And the moment the uh, Pharaoh and all his big, powerful men tried to go through, the sea gobbled them up and they died. Talk about your dream growing you. Talk about Moses having a dream of freeing the Israelites from slavery and bondage. And letting that grow him to new heights. He didn't just sit there and say, oh, I'm stuck. We're going to die either way. Here's the Red Sea and here's Pharaoh and his people. No, the dream grew him. And so you're never going to stir up your dream. You're never going to stir up your faith if every time there's a little hiccup in the road or every time something doesn't work out the way you want it or the way you think it should, you take yourself out, right? Stop taking yourself out. I already told you, if the devil can't destroy you, he's going to distract you. And if you think every negative thing is a distraction, I don't know what to tell you. You're never going to get to where you want to go, right? You're going to have bad times. You're going to have people laugh at you. You're going to have people quit on you. You're going to have people make fun of you. You're going to have people talk so bad about you. Do you know that there was a, uh, there was someone that made a status about me that I was so upset. I was so like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they did that. Do you know how much traffic I got? Do you know that I got sales from that? You guys, like there are some good things that can happen out of bad situations to God be all the glory. But are you going to allow it to grow you? Are you just going to take yourself out and paralyze? Are you going to show up and say, man, what is my dream teaching me? What is this process? What is, we're not going to panic in the process. I'm going to take it and I'm going to say, what is this teaching me? This dream is helping me become the person that it requires. If I was good enough as I am now to achieve that, to embrace that dream, whatever it is, I would have already had it. You would have already had it. That makes sense, right? Yes, no, that makes sense, okay? And so if you were that person that it took to achieve that, you'd already be there. So when I show up to my dream and I show up to these bad, devastating situations, whether it's doubt, fear, uh, pain, adversity, whatever it is, when I show up and I say, okay, how is this helping me become the person my results require? When I show up with that mindset, when I show up with that kind of intensity and that energy, do you know what that's going to do for you? That's going to help you grow. That's going to keep the dream alive on the inside of you because you're identifying that there's a process to it. We're not going to panic in the process, but we're going to understand and we're going to let our dream grow us. We're no longer going to tell our dream that it's our baby. We're no longer going to show up to whatever we're working on in our life like it's our baby where we have to manage it and coddle it. No, we are the baby. We are the baby of the dream. So how are we going to continue to grow? How are we going to evolve? How are we going to stop uh, expecting people to spoon feed us? And how are we going to stop, you know, <laughs> I mean, I know this is going to sound gross, but how are you going to stop uh, stop breastfeeding yourself and go be resourceful and figure things out on your own? How are you going to allow it to grow you and change you into the person the dream requires, Okay. And last, if you want to stir up your dream, one thing that I often have to do is I have to lean in. Man, it's so easy when you start getting in this place where you're in a lull or you're down, you're not motivated, you're not inspired. You kind of just want to do one of these, right? We want to take a step back. 
We want to remove ourselves from conversations that are awkward. People are running after a goal. People are losing more weight than us. We're counting ourselves out. We want to stop showing up. People are making more money than us. We're going through a hard time. We want to stop showing up. We don't want to go to the event because we know they're just going to get us uncomfortable, right? Oftentimes, success takes us out, not because we necessarily get lazy, but the more success you want, the more it requires you to look in those deep, dark crevices that you're hiding. You have to acknowledge I'm not a go-getter. I I have bad time management. Um, I'm not as proactive as I need to be, right? I tend to want to throw in the towel when things get tough. It it, uh, exposes. Success exposes these things about us, right? And so when I'm in a position where I'm super frustrated and I'm not seeing how things are going to work out, man, that's exactly when I need to lean in. I need to embrace the suck. I need to surround myself. I need to almost drown myself in the direction of where I want to go. I've got to push through the suck. I got to have gratitude about where I'm at right now. Hey, I acknowledge I'm not where I want to be, but thank God I'm not back at step one. It all might have fallen apart. I might have gone off the bandwagon. I might have eaten food I shouldn't have eaten. I might have skipped time uh, in, in my spiritual walk where I shouldn't have skipped time. I might have not prioritized my family, but guess what? I learned a valuable lesson. And sometimes the example of who you don't want to be and what you don't want to have and how you don't want it to go, that is a teacher. All experience is a teacher, right? And so I'm going to proactively, if I want to stir up my dream and stir up my faith, I'm going to proactively lean in every chance that I can. I am going to grow through what I go through. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm not going to talk about quitting, walking away, divorce, ending things, moving on, plan B. None of that is coming out of my mouth. I'm going to continue to lean in. I'm going to continue to grow through it. What is this teaching me? How is this serving me? How can I become the master or the teacher and not the student in this situation? Right? Why am I here? I am here because it is part of my process. So I'm not going to panic. I'm going to let it grow me and I'm going to lean in even more. I think oftentimes when there is opposition or adversity, we immediately think that we can like, hide from it. We can run from it. We can go around the mountain. We can dig a hole and go under. You have to plow through that mountain. You got to go right through it, man. You got to just show up and go right through it. It's so powerful when you do that, but I'm challenging you lean in, lean in a little bit more, do a little bit more personal development, show up to a little bit more meetings, invest in your uh, mindset and your development a little bit more, buy a course, attend an event, get an audible. I don't know what it takes, but if you want to stir up that dream and stir up that faith, stop waiting. Don't lean back and wait for someone. Oh, if they really need me, they'll reach out. If they really care about my goals, they'll reach out to me. No one's coming to save you, sis. No one is coming to save you. Everyone is focused on themselves. And so I want to empower you to lean in and focus on yourself. Go all in. Don't be distracted. Don't let it take you don't let it take you out. You want to be able to stir up your dream. Stay in the game. Give yourself permission to get off the bench and get back in the game. And I promise you, if you're willing to do that every single day, show up with what is this teaching me? How can I grow? How can I learn? I'm going to continue to lean in. I'm not going to panic. I'm going to have an emergency evacuation, which is another video I have, whether you're listening to me by way of podcast or you're watching me by way of YouTube or any other video. I have resources how to create an emergency evacuation where you can get out of your mind. Go to my podcast, go to my YouTube channel, and you'll be able to see that. Okay. You can talk yourself into, uh, into the game instead of sitting out on the bench, discounting yourself, discrediting yourself, disqualifying yourself. No one's, no one's putting you in the game. No one's chasing after you, sis. You got to chase after yourself. So I want to challenge you, no matter where you're at, share this video with a friend. Who do you know that needs to stir up their dream again? Who do you know that just needs to lean in? Stop panicking in the process, but try to grow through the process. Because if you grow through what you go through, you're going to be closer to where you want to go. I love you guys. And until next time. 